everyone, and good morning. I'm sorry I can't be there with you today, but you caught me during high season of VR and AR events. It seems like something's going on every week right now. So I wasn't able to make it out to you today. But with a little luck and some help from iMovie, maybe we can have some fun virtually. Many thanks to the organizers of Web3D 2017 and to all of you for indulging Mark and me in this little bit of theater. I'm beaming this to you from the global headquarters of Unity Technologies in beautiful downtown San Francisco. I joined Unity a little over six months ago to help the company expand its mission from democratizing game development to democratizing all of 3D development. It turns out the game engine technology, which at its essence is real-time 3D graphics, though when you unpack it, obviously there's a lot more to it than that, is ideal for building all kinds of 3D applications for designing, manufacturing, and selling products, for educating and training, for visualizing big data, for finding and curing diseases, for telling stories, and for making art. I, I guess a lot of us have known this for some time. It's come under various guises and been referred to with different kinds of nomenclature over the years. Simulation, visualization, virtual worlds, uh, serious games, though truth be told, never really liked that term, uh, to today's shiny thing, virtual reality. But really, it's all about real-time 3D graphics, regardless of what form factor and what size and what type of device it's displayed on, be it a flat screen, immersive virtual reality hardware, augmented reality glasses, mixed reality. It's about real-time 3D graphics as the next human computer interface. Computing is going immersive. We are about to escape the tyranny of the rectangle and have information all around us where and when we need it. That rectangle served us pretty well over the last 30 years, but it's time to say goodbye. Bye, rectangle. A lot has happened in the almost 24 years since Mark came to visit us that night. The computers in our pockets are thousands of times faster than the PCs of the 1990s. We now have gigabit networks. VR and AR hardware is cheap, light, and comfortable enough, or will be soon enough. And we now have people who know how to create interactive content for web and mobile. Not just the pros, but anybody can create content now. All that and Kim Kardashian. During this span, we actually did manage to get 3D running on every browser and every device on the planet. It's called WebGL. WebGL just works. Now, it's not perfect, and it may not be suited for long-form packaged content that you would build into a native app. But then again, what on the web is? WebGL is ideal for short, snack-sized content, for e-commerce applications, for brand experiences, and a whole range of other things. And with its friends, WebVR and WebAR, which are about to deploy, we now can deliver immersive experiences that you can access at the click of a link and you can discover via your social feed. So here's one interesting thing. While so much has changed in terms of the details of the infrastructure and the technologies we're bringing into play, a lot of the same issues and problems remain. How do we design immersive experiences? What are the best UI affordances? What are going to be the killer applications? And how do we take them to market? On the tech side, what kind of delivery formats do we need to send 3D over the wire? And what kind of tools and infrastructure are going to be required to build 3D on the web? From the creation side, the spirit of VRML lives on in markup formats like Glam, A-Frame, SceneVR, and of course, Vermal's direct descendant X3 DOM. This piece of the stack is vital to get content creation into the hands of everyone. While Pro Tools like Unity have become really accessible for folks, there's always going to be the need for people to dabble in a markup language by opening up a text editor, fiddling a little bit, and then hitting File Save. And combined with Vue Source, we have the global platform for mashing up and copy pasting the bits of the web that are going to become the metaverse. On that last topic, such a great idea and yet such a problem, this metaverse. From where I sit, 
it seems like we keep getting caught up in preconceived notions of how this thing is going to play out. Neil Stevenson and Ernst Klein inspired us, but the real world doesn't work that way. I think Mark Twain said it best when he was riffing on Lord Byron. He said, the truth is stranger than fiction, but it's because fiction is obliged to stick to the possibilities. Truth isn't. Now, we need to get out of that metaverse box. Another more recent quote might be able to help us out here. Vlad Vukicevic, who is the creator of WebGL and WebVR, and by the way, is now a Unity employee, make of that what you will, has famously said, the web is the metaverse, just with a 2D interface. Well, not for very much longer. <laughs>